Hello and welcome to The Busy Mom Show, the show to help moms and their families thrive. I'm your host, Dr. Leonora Rhodes. And today I'm going to be talking to Ellie Savoy about how to ditch the diet and create a fabulous, healthy, happy life. Um, before I introduce Ellie, I just want to tell you a little bit about me and about the show. So um, I'm author of a book called Beyond Soccer Mom Strategies for a Fabulous Balanced Life, which is just about to be released. And the book is the best of what I've learned in over 20 years as a physician, coach, and neuroscience expert, and a busy and often very stressed mother. And um, the book contains many, many strategies to help mothers and their families live a better life. But I didn't want to stop there. I wanted to learn from experts on other ways that women could improve their lives and their family lives. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Ellie Savoy. Hi, Ellie. Hi, Leonora. Ellie's a um, holistic health coach. Um, so tell me, Ellie, how did you get into working with women and helping them manage their weight? Well, it started back really uh, in 2008 when my mum passed away. And the saying of you can't take it with you when you die really hit me yeah. um, it, at that time because I was always uh, a very stressed out person, yeah. always rushing here and there. And it really started me thinking more about, well, what's my life really all, all about? Is it really about the stuff and having more and doing more? Because I was always a yo-yo dieter. Mm. When we're stressed, we gain weight. We don't sleep so well. And so when my mum passed away, in the grief and everything, I really started to connect more with um, what my own life was about. And then 21 months later, my father passed away mm. um, very unexpectedly yeah. of a heart attack. And that got me into a deeper conversation within myself as processing the grief. And then uh, the year later, in 2011, I was told I had two uterine fibroids, mm. and I was given four options. Uh, one was a hysterectomy, one was two other surgical procedures, mm. and one was to do nothing. Okay. And I thought, well, I'm not having surgery, and I should do something. Mm. And so that's when I really got into uh, being very serious about my own health, mm. and not uh, using a diet for weight loss anymore, but looking more towards health and not just being trimmer. Yes. And then when I managed to turn my own life around and make it a lifestyle, I realized how much freedom it had given me mm. and how much more connected I felt to my life. And then it just seemed a natural transition for me to, um, I got my certification as a, I'm a board certified holistic health coach. Okay. And, um, and it just seemed a really natural uh, thing for me to do because I had really, as I said, turned my own life around so much in a positive yeah. way. Yeah. And I know today so many women especially are struggling because they're juggling so many balls all the time. Yeah. So that was, you know, the, the short version of um, how I got to be where I am doing this work with women today. Yes. Yeah. It's interesting, isn't it, how um, we often don't really think about our health until a crisis hits. Exactly. And it's a real shame that it takes, you know, it takes something like that to happen for us to take our health seriously because, yes. you know, our health is very much, it's it's a long game. You know, it's not just about what we do today. It's about what we've done over the last several years. So it's great work that you're doing. Thank you. So, um, so tell me... Um, Juggling managing your health with a chaotic lifestyle that many, many of us are living. Tell me about how you advise women to manage that. Well, it first of all starts with um, the mindset. Yes. Whether we're talking about health, relationships, money, you know, anything that we want to change and embrace in our lives really starts with the mindset. Yeah. So when somebody is really ready, like they've had enough of the status quo, they just, um, it's not working. You know, they're really not all that happy. Mm -hmm. And so um, once we get the mindset ready, then the rest becomes easier. Okay. Um, you know, it's, it's not, this is a lifestyle change. So it's not something that happens overnight. But when we're mentally ready to make a shift, it, the process becomes easier. Yeah. And so, for example, um, driving down here today to speak with you and your viewers, yeah. um, I brought my own lunch with me. 
So I always travel with my, you know, my plenty of water yeah. and uh, some snacks if it's in between meal times. Mm. So I very rarely stop off to buy anything. So years ago, I would always, every time I filled up with gas, uh, I would always buy a chocolate bar or two. Yeah, me so too. When, yeah, right. <laughs> and it it just it was you know associated getting yeah, filling, filling up the car right. with you know filling up with some some junky food. Yeah. Um. And so that's a big piece mm. of it is to is the planning and preparation. Yes. And today, none of us need another job on our on our plates. No pun intended. Yeah, yeah. Um. And so if this feels like work. To us busy women, mm. we're not likely to do it. Yeah. So that's one of the ways I show women how to make this a reality so that you're not spending two hours a day in the kitchen. Yes. And then how to plan so that when you are traveling, you can still stay in that healthy place that you've, you know, you really start to love the way you feel. Yes. And um, as I said, it takes time, but once once you're in anything, once you're in the conversation. Yeah. You've yeah. taken that first step. Yes. And then you can really, um, it becomes a lifestyle and not something that you're in and out of. Yes. So, um, you know, generally people will get to that point where they don't want to sabotage. It's not That's a mind right. game anymore where you're like, um, where you, you know, these words that we learn when we're children, oh, if you're good, you can have a treat. If you're bad, you're going to be punished. Yeah. And so we learn these, um, we associate those words with the way we live our life. And if we've eaten junk, we, mm. we tell ourselves we're bad. And yeah. so we're on this yo-yo, you know, emotional roller coaster. Yeah. Not only often the yo-yo diet in roller coaster, but it's emotional too. Yes. And so I help women um, put those t learn those tools mm. and put them in place so that it, it really does become a lifestyle. So yeah. when they finish their their time working with me, it's not suddenly, you know, they're cut off at the knees and they don't know what to do. Yes. The investment that they've made in themselves can sell in themselves continues. Yes. And and you're so right, you know, the, the mindset and the planning. The planning is really important because it's it's so easy to slip back into old habits. Exactly. Even, you know, no matter how long you've been working on the new habits, those old habits are, are always there. They're kind of deep rooted in our subconscious mind yes. and it doesn't take much for us to slip back into them because those old habits are very easy for us. Yeah. And so I love what you said about about planning. I've got out of the habit of doing that. It's I'm I'm struggling a little bit with my eating at the moment and and you're right, planning is one of those things. Um, thankfully, I don't have the guilt. I'm not really that like guilty about how I'm doing it. We don't want to have the self-punishment all the time. Yeah, that's it's right. It just gets us going on a downward spiral. It really does, doesn't it? You Absolutely. know, it just sets us up for that, that yeah. self-sabotage. Yes. Instead of, you know, building up that self-love. Yes. You know, one thing I, I've said is, um, you know, would you marry yourself? Yeah, that's a really <laughs> interesting question. How many people say yes? <laughs> I wouldn't of years ago. <laughs> yeah. I will now. Yeah, yeah. And if your clients do many people say yes, I would, or is there a lot of a lot of kind of negativity about Well like, in the yeah. beginning, yeah. I mean, people are generally not feeling in a good place. That's right. You yeah. know, but it's good that they've made that decision to invest in themselves. Yes, absolutely. You know, it's again it's that mindset shift mm -hmm. of um you know, one of one of the big excuses I hear is when well, I call it an excuse, and it's it's a valid one in a way because mm. people will say, "Well, it costs more to eat healthy foods." Yeah, and it it's a yes and no answer in my opinion. Yes, when you get to the register to you know to pay, mm. it does cost more there, but it's it's an investment. Yes, of of taking care of our bodies. So at the end of the day, it's going to cost mm -hmm. less. Yes. Because if we're not spending, uh, we're not lot, not losing time from work, yeah. and we're not uh, dealing with expensive medical bills, mm. it's actually less expensive in the long run. Yes. But you know, we tend to think of what's in front of us now right. yeah. instead of down the road. Yeah. So it's really it's an investment. It's like um, having a you know um, your portfolio, your your mm -hmm. pension plan. Yes. You know, you make deposits there. Yeah hoping that it will be there for, you know, when we're older and we can enjoy the fruits of our labor. Yes. But we also need our body to be there with us as well so that we can get around and enjoy what we have and Absolutely. do what we plan to do later in life. Yeah. 
I mean, that quality of life when we're older is so incredibly important for uh, enjoying, you know, our, our later years, isn't it? Yeah. And, and I know um, there's a lot of healthy elderly people in my family. I'm very fortunate, yes. knock on wood. Um, and, and, and it is because that they've invested time, energy and attention on, on their health when they were younger. Yes. And, um, and yet, you know, they've said to me that many of their peers, when they meet them and they're really shocked by how old they look and how, you know, how difficult they find to get around and they're the same age. Mm. And, um, and, and when we're younger, we kind of don't see that discrepancy. Um, and if we could have a crystal ball and look all those years into the future, then we'd be able to see you know, what we were costing ourselves by ignoring our health. But, exactly. But we don't have that luxury. So it's, you know, the work that you do is very important for bringing that to people's attention. Yes, the awareness is key. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, when, when my mum passed away, that it's um, that's when I really, looking back, became aware of my own mortality. Yes. Because we often, we don't have that on our radars. Yeah. You know, it's not to be morbid, but it's, it's a fact. We will absolutely. all be gone one day. Yeah. And so... Um, one of the big transitions I made is to view my life in terms of quality, yeah. not quantity. So if we have, if we, when we feel good, everything changes. Yeah, yeah. And so rather than, you know, I was always striving for this and more of that, mm -hmm. and uh, as I said before, being so stressed out, yeah, uh, that I just, it's not that I never get stressed out or overwhelmed anymore. Yeah. But I'm I'm aware of it. When I see it, yes. I can nip it in the bud. Absolutely. Because yeah. I know where it's going to take me. Yeah. And I'm I don't want that anymore. Yeah, absolutely. And then in my in um, my book Beyond Soccer Mum, I the the model that I teach of, of you know evaluating our needs, the very top of those is is health. And as as a physician, you know, I saw so many people who neglected their health for long, long periods of time. And find themselves in a situation where it's, you know, a lot of the damage is undoable. And that's extremely sad to see that. Mm -hmm. and, and educating people early on is just, it's, it's so incredibly important. Yeah. So, well, that um, saying, you know, the old saying, we've all heard it, you are what you eat. Yes, absolutely. You know, and drink and yes. think. I mean, but the food yeah. is certainly a great place to start. It is, yes, absolutely. So tell me, Ellie, you mentioned excuses. Tell me what the top excuses that people give for, you know, not caring for their own health. Yeah. Um, well, one of them, as I said, is uh, the cost. Yes. The perceived cost. Yeah. Because it's it is it's a perception mm. that we can change if we choose. Yes. Um, time. Mm. I don't have time to cook. You know, I have to eat in the car on the way home from work, or I, you know, fill in the blank. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's it's not a priority for many people mm. um, to make that time. And we all have twenty four hours in the day. Yeah. I mean, we're asleep for many of those hours, uh, or some of those hours. But we get to choose how we spend the time. Yeah. So the time is a big one. The cost. Um, you know, uh, women with children say, you know, well, my kids won't eat that. Mm. Or, um, you know, I have to cook something separate for myself and then the rest of the family. So th th yes. there's a perceived inconvenience mm. around it. Mm. I think those are the three top excuses. Yes. Um, mm. And they're big ones and they're valid ones. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, I'm not diminishing that they, they're not real in people's lives. Yes. But... Um, again, we can we can once we bring awareness to anything, yeah. that's when we can decide. Okay, I would like to change that. Yeah, because it starts there. Yes. Um, to make that conscious decision about you know I I just don't want to continue this way. Yes, absolutely. and something needs to change. Yeah. No, I had a realization like that when my when my kids were little, and they they're both extremely fussy eaters, and there was a time when most dinners involved fish sticks and fries. And um, there was one night I found myself hoovering up and eating all of the leftovers of, <laughs> and they were cold and they were disgusting. And I stood there and I said to myself, what are you doing? <laughs> I was kind of eating this horrible junk food that I, you know, I wouldn't normally eat. And, you know, I was just, I was not giving myself the time to nurture myself and to eat healthily. And um, and I'd heard somebody else say that what they when they found themselves doing a similar thing, that they would um, 
spray the food with like detergent or something to stop themselves eating it and and I decided that was going too far wow but I know <laughs> I know um that but just that I would I would stop myself when I found you know when I, whenever I noticed that I was reaching for the kids leftovers that I would say to myself I deserve more than this good. and um it was you know, it was a real realisation. It was not a good place to be. <laughs> so, Ellie, give me an example of how you've helped a busy woman um, get control of her health and, and her weight. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, this one, one lady in particular that comes to mind uh, came to me because she, she wasn't excessively overweight, mm. but she was about 15 pounds overweight that's what she wanted to lose okay she also had high blood pressure mm. and high cholesterol mm. and she didn't really like anything to do with food she didn't enjoy shopping for okay. it she didn't enjoy cooking it and so it was just a means to an end you know I'm hungry I need to eat okay and so through the the, the work together because it's it's a journey. Mm. It's not like a light switch you flick on and off. Yeah. Um, but she's and I and I work with women that are ready for this because that th you have to be ready. Mm. And so this lady that I'm speaking about was really ready. And okay. my goodness, the results are amazing. Mm. So showing her how to um, make meals work so that you're not in the kitchen all the time and that planning piece that we spoke about. And so she cooks twice a week now, okay. and she um, knows how to prepare and plan for all of that. And she started cooking at 7 a.m. in the morning. She wow. couldn't wait to get into the kitchen oh, to goodness. plan her meals. Yeah. And it really warms my heart. It's like, it actually often moves me to tears because it is such a revelation in, in our lives to mm. be able to reconnect with food, the purpose of food, mm. that it's not just to satisfy hunger yeah. and the quality of the food. And so she has, she was, um, she, she, she's still working with me. She's almost at her 15 pound mark, yeah. but she was, but for her, even though she wanted to lose the weight, she wanted to be healthy too. Yeah. It wasn't just about weight. And I, that, that was, sort of how I was years ago, it was more about the weight rather than being That's healthy. That's right, yeah. Because even if we don't have a weight issue, it doesn't mean we're necessarily healthy. Totally, yeah. So um, she she has really been going great guns with it. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. and, and so basically just getting ourselves set up. Yes. In a way, learning everything... I, when I work with someone, it, we're all bio-individual, so it's not a one-size-fits-all. Mm. And, you know, diets are full of rules and, you know, restrictions, and we think of deprivation. Yeah. But in this way of working with busy women, busy mums, um, it, it really helps to get them, find that freedom Yeah. so that they don't feel pigeonholed, that they have to follow a set of rules. Yes. It's very freeing and it's very empowering because when we take that when we take charge of our lives and our health, yeah. it's very empowering. Yes, absolutely. And the and the, the results are amazing. Yeah. Truly amazing. And you're right, and I, I, I mean I've tried various diets over the years. I did the, the Atkins <laughs> and South Beach and and um and various other <laughs> <laughs> dodgy diets and uh, with each one I've lost weight but not necessarily felt healthier right. but as soon as life got stressful again I slipped back into my old habits right. so I love what you're saying about this you know this is about retraining this is not just about going on a diet that loses you the 15 pounds this is about setting yourself up for for future health and yes. to not have this struggle again exactly. that so many of us face and you know it makes people really the yo-yo dieting makes people really miserable you know you have a period when people say oh you look great you've lost lots of weight you know that's fantastic 
And then suddenly those comments stop because you started to pile the pounds on again and, yeah. and you start to feel bad about yourself. I've been there, done that. Oh, <laughs> I have many times too. Yeah. And you know, it's no fun going to our closets, is it? Oh, it's you not. Know, what should no. I wear? And I used to love, winter Was became my favourite month and my yeah. favourite season oh. because I could wear layers. Yeah, me too. You know, you could hide it. Yeah. Um, and now we're in the spring yes. and uh, of course we're, we're wearing less and it's nice. It, I enjoy yeah. it now mm -hmm. where I don't feel like have to cover up and hide my hips and yes you know it's um when we're in it we don't necessarily realize that we're not so happy with ourselves yes uh you know we we have an idea about it but once we move past that and we find that freedom and we're mm -hmm. not yo-yo dieting anymore yeah and we're eating for health and nourishment not just to satisfy hunger yeah uh it um you know it's a great thing to go to the closet every day oh no yeah it's <laughs> exciting I, d I just got out my my um spring summer wardrobe um again and it was quite exciting seeing some of the things that you know that were in there that you know I'd worn one last summer or you know some clothes even or you know much older than that and um and and some of them fitting me when I I thought that they might not it was it was great it was like buying a whole new wardrobe again and but it's depressing when you get your wardrobe out you know when you get those um, spring summer clothes out again and they don't fit you yeah there's nothing worse than that that feeling and um, yeah. so so that's great advice thank you so before we finish I'd love you to give um, all of our viewers three tips three things that they could go out and begin doing right away that would start them on the track towards um, optimizing their weight and improving their health sure um, well one great tip that um, anybody can start right away is to drink more water okay yeah uh, it's again not necessarily easy in the beginning because we have to form it as a habit mm. Um, I now take it with me in the car, it's by my bedside, it's by where I sit in the living room, it's on my desk, you know, I have it with me at all times. And oftentimes we can confuse hunger uh, with dehydration. Yeah. So if we have a glass of water, even before we go grab to eat something as a snack, that can help to um, satisfy the hunger. Yeah. Plus also many people are suffering from dehydration. Mm -hmm. And um, so drinking the water will definitely help to fill us up. It fills us up more. Yeah. And it, it's just, there's so many endless benefits yeah. to drinking the and water. And it's calorie free. And it's calorie free. <laughs> yeah. And you know, unless you buy a bottled water, it's free. You yeah, know, it's on the tap. Yeah. Um, that's a whole nother story about the water yeah. industry and regulations, but yeah. but anyway, it's a good place to start. Yes. And then the second one I would say is uh, for for those women that are buying anything that's packaged, whether mm -hmm. it's in a tin, a box, anything mm -hmm. that has a wrapper on it. Yeah. Um, to really read the everything about it. Mm. You know, the, the packaging, it's like the um, the fashion of food. Mm. You know, it lures us in. It looks attractive. We want to buy it. Yeah. So on the front, you know, this is the marketing. It can say, you know, full of antioxidants, lowers mm. cholesterol, all natural. That's, you know, a big one now. Yeah. Um, all natural. And so it's not enough to just look at the front. Yes. Um, you know, to turn it on its side, look mm. at the nutritional content. Mm. You know, many of these types of items are loaded with sugar mm. and sodium. And, um, you know, if they're genetically modified, mm. uh, you've got lots of uh, ingredients in there that are causing inflammation yeah. today, which is, you know, a big problem for many of the chronic diseases, That's including right. cancers. Mm. And so, um, actually, when I give a talk, it's one of the things I say is, how reading labels can save your life. Yes. But, you know, we, we tend to be so concerned about counting calories or points or anything else. Mm. But how about counting the chemicals? You know, looking at the chemicals that are in the food and then deciding not to eat them because mm. they're, they're foreign to our bodies. Yeah. And they can cause, um, you know, all kinds of problems in the body, including bloating and weight gain. Yeah. So minimizing the processed foods and certainly reading the labels. You know, in supermarkets, there are aisles dedicated to certain genres of foods. Yeah. And so if somebody likes, um, I'm going to pick on cookies, you know, mm. uh, wants a certain cookie, then to look at the other options that are available. Yeah. In the beginning, it takes time to look and read things. But once, you know, pick one or two to start with. Mm. Don't sort of 
think you've got to do a, you know a complete 180 overnight yeah. but just sort of get into the rhythm of, of looking at that because that can certainly help with health and weight yes and then the third thing is that so many people are sleep deprived today mm. and just not sleeping well mm. and as you know um, you know the hormones ghrelin and leptin get out of whack when yeah. we're not getting enough sleep mm. and the the the, the ghrelin can create, you know, it signals hunger and yes. then creates the weight gain. Mm. So we need the water, reading labels and getting enough sleep. And yeah. I know I hear this all the time that sleep is a big problem today. Lack mm. of sleep, being able to go off to sleep mm. or staying asleep. Yeah. And so one of the things we can do to help that is to certainly not go to bed with our you know, iPads and phones and things like this. Mm. Um, and also have some kind of a routine before going to bed, yeah. whether it's just um, turning the TV off mm. for 10 minutes and having peace and quiet, yeah. just to kind of bring ourselves down. Um, when it's cooler, I always love to go to bed with a hot water bottle. Oh, okay. I know, yeah. I grew up on them. We yeah, did me England, too. Right? <laughs> yeah. So many people I come across are like, what's that? Oh, She's like, funny. it's a hot water bottle. It's yeah. so wonderful. It's, you know, it soothes aches and pains. And yeah. It's your best you can, friend. You can get them that you can put in the microwave now. <laughs> <laughs> They're kind of easier, oh, aren't they? Oh, gosh. I yeah. just fill it up from the tap. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, I would just lie there with the water, water bottle on my belly and just yeah. um, the nice comforting warmth would just sort of help me go off to sleep mm, yeah. so it's different for everybody but yes. just if we put that on our radars you know to have some something that will help us to just sort of bring us down mm -hmm. to put us in a, to a calmer state yeah. so that it's easier to go off to sleep yeah actually one of the first things my husband and I ask each other in the morning is did you sleep well uh, yeah <laughs> no it is really important and and I know from um uh, from a, a brain point of view um the sleep is very important for um the underlying level of arousal of the brain and, and and how easily you get stressed and of course as you mentioned you know stress and eating are closely related as well as the hormones but when you when you're sleep deprived you get stressed more easily yes, so it's absolutely. you know it's it's bad all around so that's really really yes. great advice thank you for that yeah. so thank you so much thank it's been great you. talking to you and I, I know that um you've given some great tips to our viewers and hopefully they can get off, go off and do some of those things straight away. Yes, so thank you I so much. So. Yeah. Thank you, Lena. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I really hope you've enjoyed this show. Um, if you did, please like, subscribe or share with your friends. I would love you to watch more of the shows. So visit um, thebusymomshow.com and sign up for regular updates on the shows that are coming up. I've got some fantastic guests lined up and some great shows that I've already recorded. So go out there and begin creating the fabulous balanced life you just know you deserve. Bye for now.